welcome to Purple Lard Rock Activities. This is, and the light's shining really bad, I think. So this is Mel Chemistry again, this time it's crystals. There we go. I'm here with uh, Luke and Thomas. We're going to do two experiments today. Uh, they're going to do one each with me. Can't do both at the same time. So the first one we're going to do is there's three in this box. I'll open the box so you can see all the stuff that's in there. Lots and lots of different things in here. Uh, and there are three things, but the one we're going to do first is this one, which is not really in the centre of the camera, whatever. Chemical frost. So Luke's going to help me with this one. Um, you have to be careful because there's boiling water involved in it. But we'll follow the rules. We've got everything we need ready. I've got my gloves on. You got yours on, Luke? There we are. Uh, we've got his goggles. Luke's got his on. Mine are here. I'm going to pop them on. Safe. So we've got our goggles on, we've got our gloves on, and we're ready. So I'll just move this out of the way slightly over there. So careful, boys. You know, say, oh, don't need that. So, I've got the rules. I've got the instructions, should I say, not the rules. Uh, and uh, so, we're using a substance called uh, urea. This one here. And I'm not entirely sure it is, I'm not a chemist, we just that's the beauty of this stuff, we're just going through it together. Um, chemical symbol NH2 2CO. Some little little crystals like rock salt. Uh, which is probably what it is. Um a bit fair. Salt is sodium chloride, of course. Uh, so it says many substances, urea included, dissolve much better in water, in hot water than in cold water. So we know that, don't we? That things dissolve in hot water, not so much in cold. So like sugar, if you put sugar in your tea, it dissolves, but if you put it in cold water, it won't do. It'll take a long time. So much so in fact that hot water can dissolve more than four times the quantity of urea cold water can. So what we're going to do first is, uh, we need a thermal sticker, so we've got one there. There you go, look. So this is just for safety. Oh, I have a little, um, I have a little heat reacting thing. So it says we've got to stick a thermal sticker to the beaker. So Low down on this side. Put that in the loose loose thing and put your glove in that. There we go. I said low down, I meant on the beaker. So it's popped up, so put it slightly higher. There we go. There we go. So we stuck stuck a thermo sticker on it. Okay, it looks like it's one of the new that changes colour when it gets hotter. Yeah. Wait a minute. So the first instructions are do that and then add 100 ml of boiling water. Now I'll do this bit just to be on the safe side. As you see on the beaker, there's a marker there for 100 ml. So that's where we're going to put those on. So I've got a kettle pre prepared here. Go on carefully. Add to the hundred. Yeah, so while looks ticking that side, you can see on this side this has gone yellow. It was uh, the same colour as this one before, so I'll stick it like this. Mm -hmm. So obviously, show you the when it's yellow. Show that this is hot, and that's where it's for. Alright, so it changes colour because it's a bit hot. Now, what we need to do is, we have none of these syringes. This is the bit I'm going to get Luke to do very, very carefully. So when you transfer three millilitres, so can you see the syringe, you've seen these, you use them for your medicine. So when you put a marker on it, three millilitres, and what you need to do is put it in the water and then you pull it, and you stick with this airtight. So it's about there, that's where the three is. It's marked in even numbers for two, four, so three's in the middle, yeah? So that's where the camera, it's marked 
back two, four, six, eight, ten. We want three, so that's what we're going to do. That's what Luke's going to do. And here's a clean beast that we prepared earlier, so we need to take and it's very hot, so careful. I load it, and um, so we'll get the water out first. Um, so you have that, just practice pulling the plunger out, out of the water, so you know how it feels. Can you do it? Uh, yeah. If you do too much, we can always get back in. I have to push it back down. Right, so I'll load this. Carefully. Gently pull. You can just take it down a little bit. Is that on? See that the slight air bubble is moving. That's about three. The camera actually is upside down, so I'm turning now. So it's just going to get that air bubble. Um, so there you go, so we're on got the three mark. Right, so again, remember this is still hot, so I get it. And then we need to bring it up here. <laughs> Now I've got three mils of the swirl grid, I'll just do that so we don't stop that. See how important that is, we'll do that. So we've got, got the nice of the three mil out of there into there, okay? And then what we're going to do is, because this is going to cool down, because this is outside of the um outside of the, the hot water now, this this will cool down quicker than that one does. So what we're going to do is uh, insert the cup into the beaker, so I can see on the picture there, let's so we're going to put that back in there carefully. That's the important one. Put it on. And just, and that just keeps it, keeps it warm. Um, and I didn't see very much in there. I know it's more than that picture, but anyway, it is a three mil, and that's definitely what we did. Um, and then we're going to pour one bottle of that urea into the cup, and then stir it with a wooden stick until everything dissolves. So, let's get the wooden stick here. It's a little easy. Uh, and I need to have a child safety cap. So I'll go with it. There we go. Now carefully. Stir this all in the water slightly, just carefully. Just you do a bit more, but don't see it. It's all to the surface. Stir until it dissolves. Yeah, stir it till it dissolves. Is it dissolving? Yeah. Just lift it up slightly. Stop stirring. Stop stirring, I said. Really, I said, no, don't take it out, just stop staring. So you can see in there, let's show the camera because there's crystals in there, but they're going, they're going, they're definitely going. So there's a lot more water now, obviously, it's expanded, so it's expanded. Um, it's expanded. Should I try and make crystals if you haven't made them? Yeah, well, we're, yeah, we're mapping them, so we're making the solution, not just water. Um, it's going to be um, the problem. 
one straight line solution. And then you can just plug x to the next half square, which is the same thing. Yeah. Awesome. We'll get to that on the instructions. So when we're done, so we stir it until everything dissolves, and then we're going to transfer the contents of the cup onto a clean petri dish, a petri dish. Did we say petri, the Americans say petri? Um, which Thomas has got out for us. Oh, the thing that we've got is going to have some space to put anything in it. This is clean. And then we stir it. Yeah, yeah, we're done then. <sighs> and then we've got some liquid soap that we're going to drop in. There we go, it's yeah. all gone, as you can see that, nice and clear. I can find there, mate. Right? I'll just fix this one. Yeah, right. So we've done this bit, we stirred everything until it dissolves, and then once you've got your hot Maria solution, pour it into a petri dish, petri dish, <laughs> to let it cool. So, here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's take the cup out. Yeah, uh, and it says so. And then add one drop of liquid soap to the petri dish. That's, That's two liquid soap. It's just one drop. So this is liquid soap. Not much of it. A little tiny bit in the bottom. You need one to walk on. I don't know. Well, it's it's kind of empty. Put in that corner so well. Place it till she took it. No, no. So then one one drop, remember. Don't bring it on this is a bit I forgot about last time we did this. And then you put on paper clip. If you if you watched our previous video you'll realise there's a little bung in the end of this that I couldn't get out. Um I spent ages. And I realised afterwards that this little um, bit of clip needs to do that with. So then, hopefully, we can put one drop of that in there. Can you tell me to put that on? I will put that on quick. Yeah. Just a little bit more. There we go. Right. Back on that. Just want to make that nicer. 
So there we go, so we've done that, and then it says put it under to get that black card out. Am I funny? I'll take it off the tray now, just pop it there. Put this on top of it. Okay. And look, oh. you can see. Mm. If we can note it, see it on the camera. I'll just got one paper away. So then, so as the solution cools, can you see that look? See it? As the solution cools, the solubility of the urea drops. This means that cold water can't hold the amount of urea hot water can. So remember when we said you couldn't mix it into cold water, mm. but you can mix it into hot water. So now it's cool and you can't cope with the amount of that urea that's in there. So crystals have to form. Unless, if you're especially lucky, the crystals won't form on their own and you'll get a chance to provoke their growth with a gentle tap of a stick. But we don't have to tap it just so you can see the crystals are forming because as the water cools, there's not enough room for the urea particles in there. So it's just making that crystal formation. So that's your uh, chemical frost. Sounds like ice, doesn't it? Remember when we poured it, it was clear. That water was absolutely clear, wasn't it? And now it's cooling, it's making a chemical frost. So it says the crystals need something to form on. Even a speck of dust can do the job. But if the solution is really clear, even though the amount of rea is greater than the water can hold, crystals won't start to form unless they have something to start growing on, like a wooden stick. Which is why they suggested you tap it with a stick, but we didn't have to because to be fair, I started even before we put the the, the soap in. Um, and then there's a bit more um, about why why hot water dissolves. So it said tiny particles like ions or molecules they vi vibrate and bounce around constantly. The intensity of this movement is what we call temperature. The faster the molecules move, the hotter the substance. So in liquids, molecules move around more or less freely. In crystals, they have fixed positions. In hot water, the, the urea molecules are, at all, are so agitated that they just don't fancy sitting in a rigid crystal structure. But as the liquid cools, more and more molecules calm down enough to form an orderly crystal. So when it's hot, they're moving around, but now when they're cooling down, Bring it together and making a match of that. I'll put it that way so the camera can see that's what I'm just showing them up to him. That's what, that's what hot water's like, that's when we have the urea, and then now it's cooling down, they're swinging together and forming the crystals. It says sugar, table salt, and most other solid substance, substances also dissolve better when it's hot, but that's not always the case. Some substances, such as sodium sulfate, have a more complicated relationship with water. And their solubility can actually decrease somewhat at high temperatures. I don't know what that one is because we've not got that one. But there's the chemical frost. Um, is it? There's still a little bit of water in there. Is it moving? Put on the hole. That is now solid. I'm going to get the stick. I'll just tap it gently. I just wanted to show that it's a solid. You see. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, just be near it. But if you can pick that up, but if you can hear that from near the, the crunchy noise, so it's not like a yeah, so it's not like a sheet of ice, but it's it's got bits in it. Like I said, like a slushy. That's a good that's a good description. That look. There we go. So there's there's chemical frost. We've done that one. Mm. Was that good? Yeah. Yeah. So. Thank you very much, everybody. See you for the next one.